Okay, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Again, my name is Zach. I'm the uh, turkey biologist for the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife. And I'm here to talk to you today a little bit about wild turkeys in our state, specifically about how they were restored and also about uh, the current population status and some of the things we look to monitor to uh, make sure the turkey population does okay into the future. So I'm uh, originally from Logan County, Kentucky. Shout out to my peeps back there. Uh, I grew up when I was a teenager. I shot my first turkey probably. It was my freshman year of high school, I think, freshman or sophomore year. I went out early in the morning before school. was lucky to, to get that turkey and make it back to, to school uh, right before the bell rang. So um, that from then on, I was hooked. And uh, I've always been a pretty serious student, like I hope most of you folks are uh, for those kids out there. So it allowed me to get a job like this. And so I'm very fortunate to get to think about turkeys all the time. Um, but this time of year is beautiful spring weather. I hope that you guys can, can get out and enjoy the weather changing. Hopefully hear some turkeys gobbling. Uh, it's pretty tough right now. We're going through an unprecedented time, a time like none of us have seen before. So as part of Team Kentucky, let's heed the governor's advice, but let's get out in the great outdoors at a safe social distance and enjoy these turkeys. Um, let's get started here. Okay, so if you have cracked open the hunting guide or looked on our webpage, you're probably aware of the dates of our spring turkey season that's coming up shortly here in just a few weeks. And a youth only season is coming up very quickly this coming weekend. April 4th and 5th, Saturday and Sunday, hunters under the age of 16 can hunt turkeys in the state. Just you guys. So your season starts earlier than everybody else, so you get first crack at these turkeys. So ask your, your parents, your, your buddy, to take you out and do some scouting, find where these turkeys are, and uh, locate a spot to go hunting here in a few days. The regular turkey season for all those adults out there Hope you're getting ready too. That'll open up on the 18th and it'll run for 23 days. So just over three weeks, closing up on May 10th this year. Our season always starts on the Saturday closest to April 15th. So some years it's like this year, it's the 18th. Some years it's a few days earlier, but the middle of April is when we start our season here in Kentucky. You're allowed two turkeys in the springtime and those turkeys have to have beards, okay? Obviously, most turkeys that have beards are males, toms, or jakes, but occasionally uh, a hen, a female, will have a beard. So she's the only uh, bearded hen is the only legal hen you can take in the spring. And you're only allowed one turkey per day. And I get asked that a lot. Why can't we shoot more than one in a day? And really the reason is just to ensure that everybody has an equal chance. So if you're lucky enough to harvest a bird, let them rest for a day, go back and hit them again. Okay, that's just one regulation we have in place here in our state. You can hunt all day from 30 minutes before sunrise to sunset, and you can use any of the legal weapons. Uh, most people use a shotgun, but of course you can use a bow or a crossbow too. And uh, by the way, this is gonna be kind of interactive, so we'll be getting questions in here soon, and I'll try to answer those as I go along up some graphs like this one again because I like math and I hope you guys like you kids out there like math too and can understand that we use math every day to help us manage wildlife populations. Uh, this graph shows our spring turkey harvest in Kentucky and how it's changed since before I was born. I was born in 1981 about right here okay but your parents or grandparents probably remember when there were no turkeys in Kentucky. And a lot of them uh, out there were instrumental in helping us get turkeys back. Some of them helped the state and the National Wild Turkey Federation to release turkeys, to secure sites, farms where we could turn these turkeys loose. And others did their part by ensuring that we did not shoot turkeys, did not kill them until the population grew to a point where we could sustain hunting. Okay, so everybody has had a hand in helping grow our turkey population here in Kentucky. And as you can see, Back uh, when I was a kid, uh, the turkey population started growing a lot, okay? And that's after we started releasing the turkeys or restoring them. 
And I'll touch on that more in a minute. Then uh, time went on, and we grew and grew and grew and grew. Okay, that was, that's fun times. Every year, people are seeing more turkeys. We're lucky enough to be harvesting more turkeys. And then for the, about the last 15 years or so, we've been at a really high level, and we've kind of leveled off on the numbers of turkeys that we've, we've been able to harvest in any one season. And that's a reflection of how the population has leveled off over time. But one thing I just wanted to put, touch in mind here as I transition to restoration is to talk about how back in the 70s and early 80s, my predecessor, Mr. George Wright, he was the turkey biologist years ago for the department. And he was instrumental in turkey restoration, and I'll even show a picture of him here in a minute. He had a goal, and his goal was for us to harvest, to be harvesting 3,000 turkeys every season by 1995, okay? So he was working from the... 70s up until the early 2000s. And so his goal, again, 3,000 turkeys by 1995. Well, this arrow shows 1995. The red line shows if we harvested 3,000 birds. Can you see what we actually harvested in 1995? We harvested double that. So turkey restoration in this state has been vastly successful, and we hope to keep it that way. So let's take a, a turn back the clock a little bit and think about turkeys historically. So I'll give you a few seconds if somebody wants to chime in uh, while I'm talking and tell me who they think drew this picture of a wild turkey. Uh, I'd be interested if you could get that because it's somebody who spent a fair bit of time in Kentucky and is a very famous wildlife artist. Uh, over here on this, this page, this obviously, obviously shows some pioneer frontiersmen, okay, holding the, holding the turkey. So that must have been a pretty, pretty nice thing for him back in the day. I've got a biologist friend of mine who, whose theory is that the name Kentucky actually is sort of a combination of the terms cane and turkey. So I don't know if that's true or not, but I think it's pretty fitting. We have a, a lot of turkeys in this state, we, we great habitat for them, and we have a strong hunting tradition now. Um, let's see here. I'll try to answer a few questions as we go along so it's not just boring me talking. Maria, age seven, she asks, do turkeys really say gobble gobble? Well, they might say that in their own brain, but really when you're outside and you hear a gobble, it is so thunderous, it's such an amazing sound. It actually doesn't sound like gobble gobble. I can't even describe to you how it sounds. If you're close enough to hear it, you're probably, you, you can sometimes feel that gobble. So it's more of like this booming noise that just really makes your hair stand on edge. So they sort of say gobble gobble, but not really. Uh, Gabby, age eight, what do turkeys eat? Glad you asked that, Gabby. I'll try to talk on that in a little bit, but in short, when they're babies, young turkeys, we call them poults, they eat bugs almost exclusively. From the time they're hatched until they're several weeks old, they're eating grasshoppers and beetles, ticks, anything they can find that's on the ground, hopping around on the weeds, uh, that's what they have to have to grow fast, okay? Uh, let's see, Lori uh, out there asks, where is your favorite place to turkey hunt? My favorite place is anywhere I can go, okay? So um, that could be on my family's land back in Logan County, like I said. It could be on friend's property. It could be on our public land. We have wonderful public lands in this state. Uh, really, it's just wherever and whenever I can get out. Uh, and then Amelia age seven, how do you tell a male from a female? Good question. The most basic way to tell is like in this painting here by that, by that artist I'm asking you about, this, this structure right here is called a beard, but it's not actually a beard. It grows off the turkey's chest and it's actually a modified type of feather. Okay, we see the rest of the turkey's feathers, but these long bristles are a type of feather as well. And um, so that's the main way we tell and then second, if you, you probably can't see here, I don't know, but you've got these sharp spurs off the legs of a turkey, just like a, a rooster is gonna have, a rooster chicken is gonna have. Those sharp spurs uh, help identify uh, male turkeys, because usually, usually female turkeys don't have the beard and don't have the spurs. But again, nature's funny. Sometimes they throw us a curveball, and a, a hen will have a beard or will have spurs. Okay, so I do have a successful guess to, our, to my challenge question. The answer is John James Audubon, and congratulations to Birch for chiming in with that answer. Great job, great job, Birch, for getting that. John James Audubon spent time 
on the Ohio River in Kentucky. And uh, we actually have a, a state park named after him. So uh, that's, a, that's a really cool little legacy we have. So, like I said though, your grandparents or parents, if they're tuning in, they probably remember when there were no turkeys or very few turkeys in Kentucky. And that's because after those settlers moved in, they really liked turkeys, okay? So they shot them whenever they could to feed their families. They also changed the landscape that the turkeys inhabited. They cut down forests, they cleared it for agriculture, and they did that so much that there was no habitat really left for turkeys. There was, it was uh, nowhere for turkeys to live, plus they, they hunted them too much. And so they basically wiped them out of our state. So then, in the 20th century, in the early 1900s, we started thinking about, gosh, there's, wildlife are really hurting. We need to help wildlife out. So there were a few places in the state, and in, like in other states also, where turkeys were still hanging on. There were remnant populations. And the only place in Kentucky that we think really had birds was in the land between the lakes. So any of you Western Kentuckiers out there or anybody that's visited land between the lakes, that's sort of a historical area for uh, turkeys in Kentucky because they actually held on there. But what they started finding out, uh, Mr. George Wright again, I'll mention it again in a second, he found out through his, some of his work that turkeys in land between the lakes were not reproducing successfully. They actually had what's called uh, inbreeding depression. That means there wasn't enough turkeys out there and so uh, for, for the population to stay viable. So we started trying to get birds from outside the state because in 1954, the year my dad was born, there were less than a thousand turkeys in Kentucky. So in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, um, Mr. Fred Hardy here, the man with the, the cigarette and holding the turkey there, he was in my position long ago, and we were trying to move turkeys around to restore the population back then. So this is a really cool photo um, that, uh, that I found in our archives. So in the 70s, we, we tried moving turkeys from Ohio into eastern Kentucky up on Pine Mountain, and the success of those early efforts really, they just weren't successful. Probably because we weren't getting enough turkeys from enough different places to provide some different gene flow. All right, so let me talk again about Mr. George Wright because in my day, every few days, I'll hear from somebody out there that knew Mr. Wright and really spoke highly of him. And as a biologist for the department, I strive to, be, to do as good a job as he did. Now he had a different challenge. There were no turkeys when he was at the helm, so his job was to get turkeys. So it's pretty neat. He had to work out arrangements with other state wildlife agencies to, to ask them for turkeys. In exchange, we went and got animals for other states. Sometimes we, we gave them white-tailed deer, we gave them river otters, different things like that. State wildlife agencies, like the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife, do things like that to help restore populations. So here's, here's uh, uh, Fish and Wildlife. We're releasing releasing a hen turkey out onto the landscape. This is sometime in the early 80s probably. Um, and this graph, these blue bars, well first off you're probably looking at the picture in the background and that's the late Jimmy May. I got to know Jimmy right before, uh, toward the, the end of his life. It was very nice to meet him, meet him uh, at the Logan County Inn by the way. He is releasing a turkey probably sometime in the 70s or 80s. What this graph shows is the number of turkeys that we released each year from 1978 to 1997, okay? Every year we started turning a few more loose. Where did we get these? We got these from other states, Missouri, uh, Kansas, all kinds of places, all over the, the middle part of the country where there were already turkey populations. They managed their turkey population. They gave us a few, we released them. Now we manage our turkey population too. So the peak was in the late 80s and after that, we started having enough turkeys on the landscape that we, we needed to turn fewer and fewer um, loose. So that all wrapped up by the late 90s, pretty much. So now we have a population that is very healthy. You have a chance to see turkeys in any of the 120 counties in our state. And so we have a, a very healthy population, several hundred thousand turkeys. So what you'll notice here, this graph pretty much mimics the spring turkey harvest graph that I showed. Um, but what you'll see, things get a little wiggly toward the end. Well, why is that, toward to where, where, where we are now? Because when you first turn po populations of wildlife loose and you give them adequate protection, you know, our game wardens make sure people don't poach turkeys, then the population can grow really fast at a fast rate. But over time, as more and more turkeys get put out, there's fewer and fewer places for them to live. And so they start filling up the available habitat 
And at that point, the population starts to fluctuate, starts to change. So now we're not growing as fast as we used to be, so we kind of go up and down every few years. All right, so let me answer a few more questions here. Eli, age six, he asks, how fast do turkeys run? Man, that's a great question. I'll tell you this, they can run a lot faster than me. The last time I tried to, to outrun one, I, I pulled a muscle, and I'm not kidding. Uh, I, I actually did that twice in here recently. Uh, so how fast they run, I wish I could give you a number. I honestly never thought about it, but I can tell you they run, they can probably run as fast as, a, as a, when a horse gets started running. Now, they can't sustain that, and chances are they're going to run and take off flying. But they can run very fast. Uh, Gabe, age nine, what area of Kentucky has the biggest turkey population? That's a good question. In general, it's probably going to be what we call the Green River region of Kentucky. This is sort of western, central, southern part of the state. And why is that? Well, because if you, if you, uh, help, if you get on the internet and look at Google Earth, uh, Google Map, you'll see that Kentucky in that area has a good mix of dark green forest and lighter colored agriculture and green grass. So Turkey's ideal habitat is a good mix of all that stuff where there's farmland, there's crops and hay and pasture fields, and there's woods, okay? Where all that stuff is mixed up is where turkeys typically do the best. That's what they're adapted to do. So that area has the biggest turkey population in the state. But there are turkey, healthy turkey populations across the state. So even in eastern Kentucky in the mountains, I was out yesterday, I hiked about eight or nine miles yesterday, and I saw turkeys all the time in the woods. I mean, it was, it's really neat. So turkeys are very adaptable, and, uh, and they can live in a lot of different types of habitat. So even in the east, even in the west, where there's more row crop land, there's still good turkey population. Okay, Isabella asks, why is it important to restore populations? Well, that's a great question. It's important because younger generations like you kids watching we want you to enjoy the wildlife resources that we have or in the cases again of your parents and grandparents they did not get to experience turkeys growing up so they collectively we as a society as a, a department a group of turkey hunters we wanted there to be turkeys not just so we could hunt them but so kids like you could enjoy them and so that's what we tried to do we restored them and now our job is to conserve them Again, so future generations can experience it. Uh, okay, I'll ask, is this Kaya? Kaya, age 10, she asks, can I shoot a turkey off his roost? And the answer is no. You cannot shoot them off the roost. That would be what we call unsportsmanlike. So again, if you play sports, if you ever watch uh, uh, football in the fall, you'll see that referee call uh, unsportsmanlike conduct. Well, our game wardens, they're kind of like our referees. And if they catch that, they would call that unsportsmanlike. And the reason is because the turkey is roosted there and he has no, no ability until he's ready to fly down, that's where he's going to be. So taking him off the roost is not legal. Now, that's not to say you can't shoot him out of a tree during the day after they've already woken up. Because sometimes that happens. If you're hunting in a swamp somewhere that's kind of flooded, turkeys can fly up in trees. And at that point, it is legal, although I do not recommend it for safety reasons. Safety dictates that you always got to know what's behind your target. And unfortunately, when you point that gun up in the air, you may or may not know what's behind your target. So let that turkey come down or let that turkey go. Work on calling it in, work on ambushing them, whatever it takes, but don't make an unsafe shot, number one. Okay, let's keep going here real quick. So I wanted to, do, to talk to you a little bit about some of the work that we're doing right now putting GPS transmitters on turkeys. And um, to do that, I'm going to, uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm gonna show you a little video. Now this video uh, is not here in Kentucky. It's down in, uh, it's probably in Louisiana or Georgia. My good friend, Dr. Brett Collier at Louisiana State University. He is a turkey trapping, turkey studying guru. Okay, so this is his video I'm gonna show you. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to skip, if I can, if it pops up here. Let's see. Okay, let, hold just a second while I try to get this, this going. Okay. I think about got it. Got it up there. All right. All right, so let's try to watch this. So I'm going to speed this up to about to the 30-second mark. Okay, what we got here, we're, we're, we're looking, we're in a camera looking at this field 
on the edge of the woods. It could be in Kentucky, even though we don't have as many pine trees. You know, if you can see it right here, there are rockets set up on posts, but the turkeys don't know it. They're busy eating corn. There's a net hidden on the ground. Boom! What just happened? A couple of them flew away, but the rest couldn't fly away because they're under a big net. Look at those turkeys flopping around. There's somebody running. You'll see him right. Oh, there he is. There's the researcher. He's got to get there to check on those turkeys. Okay, you want to see that again? We'll, we'll show that again real quick here. Let's see here. The reason he's running is to get there and get those turkeys safely out of the net because we don't want them to hurt themselves. But while, while he's got them, he's going to put a little backpack on them. And that backpack's got a transmitter so we can track those birds. He's also going to put leg bands uh, on the turkeys too. So, uh, it's kind of a rush to do this. Let me tell you, it's exciting. But that's where I pulled my muscle when I got up out of the blind. We have to hide back in a, in a hunting blind because we, we launch uh, those rockets with the remote uh, detonator, okay? So, all right, I'll get out of that and get back to my, my presentation here now. All right, bear with me here, technology. Okay. Um, oh, shucks. Now let me get slide back up here to where I was at. Okay. All right, so this is what it looks like. This is a still picture of my buddy Joe and buddy Laura. They're biologists that, here at the department that helped me. So we were out getting this net set up. You can see we've, uh, we've prepared this site, and we're going to catch turkeys here. So I don't have a video of it, but this is, this is a still picture taken by a camera when we fired our net. So you can see down here a couple turkeys. Barely, they're trying to get out of there, but they don't make it. We catch them. It's pretty neat. A couple big gobblers. Um, so we go after them. We actually used a decoy in this case to help uh, lure those turkeys in. This was last summer. Usually you catch turkeys in the wintertime when there's not much food out there, and so they're attracted to the bait really easy. Okay, but uh, this is for research. So what my friend Laura here, she's bringing up a big cardboard box. And we, have, we put that box there, we put the turkey in the box so it can calm down while we, we take another one and we put the transmitter on it, okay? So here I am my bald head showing, but we're, I'm holding this turkey down under the net while, my, while the others can get there to help me. We're going to get it up out of the net, and just like this, this is my, my buddy Joe, uh, biologist again, he's a turkey catching guru. We've actually, we're, he's holding the turkey. We've got a little blindfold on the turkey because we want the turkey to stay calm, okay, while I'm putting a transmitter on its back, okay, and here Joe is putting a leg band on it. That way, if in the future a hunter takes that harvest that bird during turkey season, it'll have a number on it where they can call us and let us know they harvested the bird. And this is actually an important way that we study turkey populations, is by catching some, putting a band on it, and then when hunters harvest the bird and call us, then we can know about how many were harvested and we can make estimations on how many turkeys are out there. So this is a picture of what the little transmitter looks like. It's about the size of a, oh, it's a, you know, a little bit smaller than your cell phone, okay? Just to show you some cool information we can get from from having those transmitters on turkeys, these dots show where the turkeys moved, okay? So you can see we caught the turkey uh, right, over in, uh, right over in this little field, but you can see how they use the woods, they use the field some, and this is important for us to know where the turkeys are moving, how far they're moving, okay? So next, my next point here as I kind of wrap up is gonna be reproduction, okay? This is one key element about turkey population that we try to study because it's critical, okay? Uh, this is a little baby turkey, newly hatched, okay? And what is this turkey standing in, this little poult? It's standing in some weedy wildflower cover, okay? This is important. It's important because this little poult has to hide from uh, predators like hawks and owls uh, and all kinds of other things that want to try to eat it. So this vegetation is important because it's spread out enough that that turkey can move through there, but the predators can't see down into it very well, okay? Plus, importantly, back to the question that was asked earlier about what they eat, turkey this size and for several weeks is gonna be eating bugs. There are more grasshoppers and different types of bugs. If you walk, your mom and dad probably don't want you to walk through this type of stuff in the summertime because you're liable to get ticks, okay? But that's because this type of habitat that harbors bugs, okay? And that's what those turkeys have to eat in order to grow real fast. All right, so another graph for you. The gray bars are like I showed earlier, okay? This is turkeys that are harvested in turkey season. The black line is reproduction, okay? Now, what do you notice about that black line? It's kind of been going down, okay? We had a spike here and we, had, we got little spikes. 
Well, as I said, when turkey populations kind of get stable, they're going to fluctuate over time. And this black line is basically how many turkeys were hatched, okay? If we have a really good year like we did in 2008, so 12 years ago, we had a really good year for turkey.